Poker for Couples comes in two different versions, the quick version and the advanced version. This video will teach you how to play the advanced version. First, you get to decide each other's outfits. However, you must make sure both players are wearing exactly five pieces of clothing each. A pair of socks or shoes always counts as one piece of clothing. It's important that you get the number of clothing items right, otherwise the game won't work properly. So, five items each, no more, no less. Another important thing to remember is that neither player is allowed to reach climax until the winner of the game draws a climax card. Okay, let's get started. Each player selects a pawn and places it on the S marked space with the corresponding color on the game board. Deal out a hand rankings card and a bail card to each player. The color of the bail card should match the color of the player's pawn and have the number 2 facing up. Also make sure you have a timer, for example the one on your phone. Give each player 3 coins and place the remaining coins next to the game board and within reach for both players. Individually shuffle the talk cards, the strip cards, the cuddle cards, the nude cards, the hot cards, the lust cards, and the climax cards. When done, you should have seven different face-down stacks. Randomly draw two shop cards and place them face up next to the seven stacks. Put away the remaining shop cards as they will not be used in this game. Finally, remove the two jokers from the deck of playing cards and play rock, paper, scissors to decide who will be the dealer for the first round. Players attempt to score as many points as possible each round. Points are scored both by creating the best poker hand and by winning tricks. For each point scored, players move their pawn one step on the game board track. As players move along the game board track, they will pass lines instructing them to draw various reward cards. Each reward card contains a number of different sexy activities and the player gets to select one of them to act out with their opponent. The first player to reach the finish line wins and gets to draw a climax card to end the game. The player who won rock, paper, scissors is the dealer for the first round and starts by shuffling the deck of playing cards. If this is the first time you play poker for couples, shuffle it well since the cards are packed in order. The dealer now deals out five cards face down to each player. These cards make up the player's hand and are always kept secret from the other player. However, for the purpose of this video, one player, let's call her Emma, will play with her cards face up. Her opponent, let's call him David, will keep his cards face down. In a real game, both players will keep their cards in their hand, just like in most card games. After the deal, both players look at their cards and decide if they are happy with their hand or if they want to exchange any cards. The non-dealer goes first and David decides to exchange four cards. He places them face down, starting a discard pile. He then draws four new cards from the deck of unused cards, replenishing his hand up to five cards again. It's now Emma's turn. She currently has a pair of queens and decides to exchange the rest of her cards by placing them in the discard pile and then drawing three new cards. The process of exchanging cards is repeated one more time. This time, David exchanges three cards. Emma now has three of a kind and decides to exchange two cards. After the second card exchange, players have a final chance to exchange cards. 
They follow the same procedure as before, however, this time it comes at a cost of one coin per discarded card. Players can exchange as many cards as they want and repeat the process as many times as they want, as long as they have coins to pay for it and do it in turn. Please remember that exchanging cards is always optional. In this example, David decides to spend two coins to exchange two cards. Emma pays one coin to exchange one card. David does not want to exchange any more cards. It's Emma's turn again, and since the last card she received did not help her, she decides to pay one more coin to exchange one card again. Since Emma now has a full house, she of course does not want to spend more coins either. It's now time to move on to the next phase of the round. In most poker games, players simply show their hands at the end of a round. But in this game, the cards are played out in tricks. There are no trumps, and the objective is to win all tricks. And if that is not possible, win the last trick. The non-dealer leads to the first trick. Players must follow suit, and a player with no card of the suit led may play any card. Whoever plays the highest card of the suit led wins the trick and leads to the next. Please note that the cards are not thrown into the center of the table, as in, for example, whist. Each player instead plays onto a face-up pile in front of themselves, so that at the end of the round, the player's poker hands remain intact. Okay, let's continue. David is the non-dealer and leads to the first trick by playing the King of Hearts. Emma is able to follow suit and plays the Ace of Hearts. Emma wins the trick. Emma leads to the second trick with the Queen of Hearts. David cannot follow suit and may play any other card, in this case the Four of Clubs. Emma plays the Ace of Clubs, and David is forced to play his Ten of Clubs. Emma plays the Queen of Clubs, and since David is out of clubs, he plays the Four of Diamonds. Emma plays the Queen of Spades. David is lucky enough to have the King of Spades, so he wins the last trick. In poker for couples, winning the last trick is important, because the player who wins the last trick is always awarded two points. If a player manages to win all tricks during a round, they receive two additional points for a total of four. David did not win all tricks, but he did win the last trick, so he now advances his pawn two steps on the game board. Now it's time for the players to compare their poker hands. David has two pairs, kings and fours, while Emma has a full house. Emma has the best poker hand. She checks her hand rankings card and discovers that her full house is worth eight points and one coin. So Emma first takes one coin from the bank. Then she advances her pawn eight steps on the game board track. Please note that only the player with the best poker hand gets points and coins for their hand. In this example, David received two points for winning the last trick, but since Emma had a better poker hand, he does not get any points for his two pairs. As players move their pawn on the game board track, they will sometimes pass lines instructing them to draw different kinds of reward cards. In this example, Emma passed a line instructing her to draw a talk card. So Emma draws a card from the stack of talk cards and places it face down in front of her. You should not look at your drawn reward cards until both players have moved their pawns. It's possible to pass more than one line during a round. If that happens, you draw one card for each line you pass 
and select one activity from each card. The chosen activities are acted out in the order the cards were drawn. If both players draw reward cards during a round, the activities on the card or cards drawn by the non-dealer are acted out first. Since David has already moved his pawn and did not draw any reward cards, Emma can now look at her top card and select one of the activities. When you've completed this round's activities, all drawn reward cards are removed from the game and the round ends. If no player drew any reward cards during a round, you simply move on to the next round without acting out any activities. The player who did not deal this round becomes the new dealer for the next round. Here's a quick summary of how points are scored. The player who wins the last trick always scores two points. If they managed to win all five tricks, they score two additional points for a total of four. The player with the best poker hand scores points according to the ranking table found on their hand rankings card. If both players show hands with the same rank, normal poker tie-breaking rules apply. Please see the back of the rulebook for more information about this. There are three ways to earn coins. Each round, immediately after players have compared their poker hands and moved their pawns, the player who is behind on the game board track receives one coin. If you're tied, nobody receives any coins. As shown on the hand rankings card, some of the better hands will award players with both points and coins. Remember that only the player with the highest ranking hand can win the points and coins listed on the hand rankings card. The final way to earn coins is by choosing not to exchange cards. If a player decides not to exchange any cards at all during a round, they receive two coins. If they exchange cards the first time, but does not exchange any cards during the second card exchange, they receive one coin. For example, you exchange two cards during the first card exchange and find yourself with a flush. You, of course, do not want to exchange any cards during the second card exchange and take one coin. In another example, you're dealt a high two pair and an ace. It's not a great hand, but it's not a bad one either. You decide to keep this hand, and since you did not exchange any cards at all this round, you get two coins. Note that if you earn coins by not exchanging cards, you are not allowed to pay coins to exchange cards later that round. Also note that if the bank runs out of coins, you cannot earn coins until a player spends coins to fill up the bank again. The shop cards work a little differently than the other reward cards. When you pass the line instructing you to select one shop card, you may look at both shop cards and select one of them. You may then buy as many activities as you want, as long as you can pay for them. However, you may not buy the same activity twice. When you have completed the activities you bought, the chosen shop card is removed from the game. If you have no coins or choose not to buy anything, you must leave both shop cards for your opponent to find when they pass that line. Note that if you are the second player to pass this line, there will probably only be one shop card left, so you get the one your opponent did not select. Whoever crosses the finish line first with their pawn wins the game. The winner draws a climax card and selects one activity on that card to end the game. As the name implies, it's now allowed and encouraged for both players to reach climax. Note that if any other reward cards were drawn during the last round, they must be resolved before the winner chooses an activity on the climax card. 
Also note that the last round is always played until the end, so it's possible for both players to pass the finish line during the same round. If that happens, the player with the best poker hand in the last round wins the game. The bail card can be used if you do not like an activity chosen by your opponent. If you decide to use the bail card, your opponent must instead select another activity on the same reward card. If a player bails out from an activity found on a shop card, the other player gets a full refund and may instead buy something else if they want to and can afford it. The first time you use your bail card, you turn it over to show the number one, indicating you have one bail left. When you use it the second time, you discard the card, meaning you have no more bails for the rest of the game. Also, if you are unable to complete an activity exactly as it is written, it's perfectly fine to tweak it so it can be completed, as long as you both agree with the changes. Finally, please note that clothes can only be permanently lost during activities found on strip, nude, and climax cards. You may, however, temporarily remove clothes to complete activities found on other reward cards, as long as you put them back on afterwards. And that's it. We hope you'll have fun playing.